So now we're going to look at max and minimum turning points. If we take this cubic function, for example, we already talked about the derivative. So let's say I take this point, this red line here denotes the slope of the tangent at that point. And as we move along that point, at different points, the slope of the tangent is going to change. So if we keep moving all the way to the top, to the maximum point of this graph here, of the local max, you can see that the slope has flatlined. In other words, that the slope is zero. And we know that the derivative is the slope. So if the slope is zero, that means that dy dx is zero. All right, so at the maximum turning point, the slope is zero. In other words, your dy dx is zero. And similarly down here with the minimum point, at the minimum point, the slope is also zero. So that's another position where dy dx is equal to zero. So our turning points, our maximum turning point or our minimum turning points are the two points on the graph in this cubic function where the slope is equal to zero. So therefore, if we want to find turning points, if we want to find max or min turning points, we're really interested in the points where the slope of the tangent line is zero. In other words, where our derivative is zero. So therefore, our method for calculating turning points, remember we're trying to find the points where the derivative is zero. So the first thing we have to do is get the derivative, differentiate the function, calculate your dy dx. Once you have your dy dx, you set it equals to zero because the turning points are where the dy dx is zero. And then solve for x. That will give you your x value. And don't forget you have to find your corresponding y value as well by filling back in to the original function. So solve for x and find your corresponding y value as well. Once you've done that, you'll have found the turning point. The next thing you'll have to do is classify it, right? So once you've found our turning point, we need to classify it by filling it into our second derivative. This thing here, d 2 y dx squared, into our second derivative to figure out is that turning point a max or a min. So after you've put your dy dx equal to zero, when you get your second derivative and test the point, if the second derivative is less than zero, that means you're dealing with a local maximum. So it's a local maximum if the second derivative is less than zero, and it's a local minimum if your second derivative is greater than zero. It's a local minimum. So all of this will make sense with an example. So let's take a look at an example here. I am going to go through question two here. Find and classify the turning points of the function y equals x cubed plus 3x squared minus 24x plus 11 y equals x cubed plus 3x squared minus 24x plus 11. Remember what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to find the turning point, so I need to get my derivative and set my derivative equals to zero. So dy dx is equals to 3x squared plus 6x minus 24. That is my derivative, and I'm interested in where the derivative is zero. So 3x squared plus 6x minus 24 is zero. Let's solve this quadratic equation. Probably make it a little bit easier if we were to divide it by 3 right now. So we'll have x squared plus 2x minus 8 equals 0. And solving this, x plus 4, x minus 2 is 0. So we get x is equals to minus 4 and x is equals to 2. So we have two turning points. They are the two x values. The next thing I have to do is fill back into the original function to get my corresponding y values. So in this case, y will be minus 4 cubed plus 3 times minus 4 squared minus 24 times minus 4 plus 11. That will give me 91. And in this case, y will be 2 cubed plus 3 times 2 squared minus 24 times 2 plus 11. And in that case, y is going to be minus 17. So we have two points. We have the point minus 4, 91, and the point 2, minus 17. Now the next thing to do is figure out which one of these is a max and which one of these is a min. And in order to do that, we must calculate our second derivative. Now when you're calculating your second derivative, it's very important you go back to your first derivative. This is what we are going to differentiate again. So we have our first derivative, dy dx equals 3x squared plus 6x minus 24. Now we'll calculate our second derivative, 
d2i dx squared is going to be 6x plus 6. So that's my second derivative, and I can use my second derivative to test the two points. Now, what were my two points? I had when x was minus 4, the point minus 4, 91, and when x was 2, the point 2, 17. So I have two points to test when x is minus 4 and when x is 2. So when x is minus 4, my second derivative will be 6 times minus 4 plus 6. That's equals to minus 18. Minus 18 is less than 0, which tells me I'm dealing with a maximum when I'm talking about the point at x is minus 4. And that was the point minus 4, 91. And then when I test x is 2, my second derivative, d2i dx squared will be 6 times 2 plus 6, which is 18. 18 is greater than 0, which means I'm dealing with a minimum at the point where x equals 2, and that was the point 2 minus 17. So this means I had a cubic function. If I do a quick sketch of here, we had the cubic function, y equals x cubed plus 3x squared minus 24x plus 11. That was this cubic function we had and we found two turning points, so the maximum turning point and the minimum turning point. And we found out that the maximum turning point was at the point minus 4, 91, and that the minimum turning point was at the point 2, minus 17. So that is our introduction to max and min turning points. The best thing for you guys to do now would be to practice some of these questions, keep an eye on your solutions. And for access to questions, solutions, graded quizzes and more, visit www.leamingmass.com.